really common. 30 to 40 percent of couples, and I see it all the time, say they're not sleeping together. They're sleeping in separate bedrooms. It is a thing. And, you know, it's amazing. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell why. It could be our own sleep issues, or it could be sleep issues with your partner. The list is long. You have patients that'll tell me they're having difficulty talking and turning and secure. Do you set cuddle or not? The alarm's going off, snoring, teeth grinding, and on and on. So it's a problem. So I've heard some myths. I don't know if they're true or not, about couples wanting to sleep in separate beds. They say, for example, that it helps them actually be a little healthier because they sleep more. They say they're actually happier because they don't have to deal with their spouse's issues, as you pointed out. This one caught me off guard. Better sex lives. I would think it's the opposite, right? You're in a different bedroom. I think you have sex. But they actually say that they should be better setting when they are together. That maybe after the heart grow fonder. And these theories, I don't know if they're true, but that's maybe one of the reasons that more and more couples are sleeping separately in a different bed than their spouse. So I wanted to ask you ask a couple to join us to talk about this a little bit. Like many of you at home, Levon is with us. She's dealing with destructive sleep patterns, and she's just going to be in a different bed, maybe the room, and her husband, Julian. Thank you for being here. So, Levon, how bad is it? Oh, Dr. Oz, it's terrible. It's like an episode of the Flintstones at my house when my husband falls asleep. That's how <laughs> terrible it is. He's just sitting here, striking at you. He does, and it's, it's very frustrating because I want to wake up the next morning feeling refreshed. I am a med student. And I'm also a mom, I have so much going on, and I need to be refreshed when I get up in the morning. And it's just so frustrating not to have a good, a good night's rest. Now, Julia, you're res resistant. You don't want to be in separate beds. Why is that? Because Dr. Oz, they feel like how beautiful my wife looks. Even though she don't come to bed looking this beautiful, <laughs> but I want to sleep next to my wife. <laughs> All right, so we did a little homework here. We, have, we actually started to just evaluate you guys. Uh, just to be perfect, were you aware of how much of a problem there was between the two of you? No. Julie, you're unaware of how, <laughs> how, how, how challenged the mom was to sleep? When the doctor was at home, as I tell my wife, when I fall asleep, I have no clue what was going on with us. So. <laughs> well, uh, let, let me clue you in. We actually put up cameras. They weren't hidden cameras, thankfully. They were cameras you knew about. And here's a picture of the two of them getting in the bed together, right? There's a little video. There they are, very lovely, lovely, all right? And we actually put a sleep tracker device in the rooms as well. The first night they stepped together, we tracked them both. And uh, you're kicking around a lot. If you pay attention to that video, there's a lot of striking. Flintstones is not a bad thought here. Legs are always racing forward. And the second night, we put you in separate rooms. Right. Um, and we noticed something interesting. When you're in separate rooms, well, you're still moving around a lot. <laughs> Julia's not next to you, but you're still moving around. But I wanted to actually put some numbers behind this. So we had one of these devices that looks at how you're moving around and assesses the quality of your sleep. So Dr. Ash, you have the results, right? So let's start off with Levon's result, her sleep test result, when she stepped together with her husband, Julia. And it was... Well, Levon, you didn't do that bad, actually. It was oh, wow. 78 was the score, and you did get some deep sleep, and you got some REM sleep. That's really important. So out of 100. Yeah. That's like oh, a wow. C+. Plus. Not bad at all. <laughs> C+. Plus. I mean, you're not going to get through medical school with that. But, <laughs> but, you know, you might get into medical school. <laughs> We're for improvement, but that's so bad. <laughs> so the big question is, to answer Julian's biggest fear and his biggest dream, does it make a difference if you guys aren't together? And so what was the result when Levon stopped separately from Julian the second night? Well, Levon, surprisingly, you got a score of 79. So oh my just goodness. one point. Wonderful. Yes. Wow. So that's it? That's amazing. <laughs> Does that surprise you? I sure did. I thought it would be a total discrepancy. I thought it would be totally different. Well, it looks like it didn't make that much of a difference. Wow. What do you think, Joy? Are you happy? Yes, I'm very happy. Did I make your day? <laughs> <laughs> Get back in the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we've sort of addressed a little bit. The big question out there is, should you be sleeping in a different bed than your spouse? We've been asking that. I think based on these results, and I think my personal experience, because I have to go through this as well, I don't think most people should have to. I'll weigh in on this. I looked at all the research, and as a doctor, and a husband, all those other factors, I think it's worth your best shot to sleep in the same bed as your spouse. That's why, up next, we're going to give you the couple's plan to a better night's sleep in the same bed. Julie and all the men out there will be celebrating. <laughs> we'll be right back with that clue. 50% of married couples are now sleeping in separate bedrooms than their spouse. Doctors are calling this sleep divorce, and it's on the rise. But what if you want to improve your own sleep without taking your spouse out of the bed? Sleep specialist Dr. Carol Ash is here with the couple's plan to a better night's sleep in the same bed. So what are the three things that couples complain about the most? Dr. Oz, we have body heat, body movement, and disruption, and the big one, snoring. 
So when I look at this here, let's talk about Julian a little bit. Which of these would be your biggest complaint? I would say the body heat. Oh my goodness, it's like being in a furnace. His temperature just gets so hot, it just gets so hot in the bed that sometimes I just have to get up. That Julian like a piece of coal, yes. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Right. Coming over, let's go through all these issues. We'll, we'll get to the heat one as well. First off, let's address this issue of how couples sleep together. What, you want to come next to Dr. Ash? Let's do one of these fine. All right, so this is how I sleep in my bed. And my, Lisa always puts her head on my chest, and then, you know, I start lying on my back, which is how I've always slept. How are you and Julian? Is this, uh, you ever sleep this way? It varies. It varies. It varies. <laughs> moving around all the time. Yeah. I saw the video. So, Dr. Ash, what do you think about this as a sleep position? How does this work with couples? Well, you know, Dr. Oz, sleep positions can really affect your marriage. You know, what are we talking about? You know, intimacy, touch, those things are all important for your emotions and your physiology. So this is a good position. You know, it's nice to cuddle and, and get close. But the number one position, actually, is spooning. And the reason for spooning is you really can kind of get that nice closeness into every little nook. And in addition to that, um, you don't have to smell bad breath. <laughs> so it's really a good start. But obviously, you know, if you're going to be close like that, it's going to start to really heat up. So then you're going to need something to help you really manage that. And obviously, that's a problem that you're dealing with as many other people are. So the next thing that you need to do is create a pillow wall. Oh, wow. Yeah. Create you a pillow wall. That? Pillow wall. Pillow Would that be cool? <laughs> Get that furnace away from you? Yeah, yeah definitely. I've got Julian over here. He's still mad about that comment. <laughs> so, Carol, show us here. Uh, if you like, uh, you can lie down oh, there. Gotta... Demonstrate how to do this. So if you think about the way you like to cuddle together, you could use your own bed pillows or a, a pillow like this and just get nice and close. But this pillow allows you to stay close but maintain the temperature and create your own space. So it's really a nice solution to let you kind of cuddle but keep the heat down. Now, we don't have one of these long, cool blue pillows. We have we just use our regular old pillows, and we make, I make a little wall down there. That way she wants to look live to, on my chest. She just pretends to the pillow's the chest and softer. And oh, wow. to get all the hair in her mouth, all that bad stuff. <laughs> but this is something families can do. You know, they, they have all kinds of different versions of this. But I think this is a, a tool that can save a lot of marriages. What do you think, Julian? I'm up for it. I just wish you would get a little closer to me. Yeah. Gonna, if we didn't the lights, please, Julian. I want to get, I, I wanna get Levon in the mood. <laughs> Coming over here. Thanks, you, Hunter B. So let's, let's talk a little bit about how couples, you move around, and, and the disruption happens a lot when we have to go to sleep at different hours. So you actually argue we can't afford to go to sleep at different hours. We have to have a common bedtime. We really do, Dr. Oz. You know, this is something that most people will say, this doesn't sound easy. But if you can get it right, it's really, really beneficial. You know, people will be familiar with these scenarios. You know, he wants to be up all night long watching TV. You're an early riser. Maybe you want to read a book into the late hours, and he wants lights out at 10 a.m. So you have yeah. all these. 10 p.m. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> but all these disruptions in your schedule, it makes a difference. And so what you want to do is, are you going to stand there and just tolerate it and say, I'm moving to a separate bedroom? Or are you going to find a middle ground? And you can. You can find a middle ground. So what you want to do is have him use a DVR and tape that TV show and try and watch it together and set a better bedtime. You know, read your book a little earlier so you guys can get together. So same bedtime, I get that. Same bedtime. What about the issue of getting up at different hours? I have to get up earlier to be here at the studio than Lisa needs to get up in order to get Oliver off to school. You know, most people think I got to use the iPhone alarm and things like that that are going to be very disruptive. But there's devices out there now that can actually get you up without disrupting your bed partner. And that's one of these little alarms that there's ones that you can put under the pillow this one you put on your wrist and actually vibrates and it will get you out of bed without disrupting your bed partner's schedule so they work hey julian catch us over there you still awake catch that he got it nice catch hope it comes in handy my friend all right up next dr ash is going to give us the best way to quiet a snoring spouse very important tip stay with us sound familiar have you all been there if it does, we're dealing with one of the most common couple complaints about sleeping in the same bed, which is snoring. See back to Dr. Carol Ash is back with the best way to quiet a snoring spouse. It is called the wet 
and wild method. And we just say this is the most provocative sleep show ever done, and we're going to come through on this. So explain what this wild and wet method is. Okay, so first we have wet. Now, one of the common reasons someone will snore is because they have nasal congestion or allergies, or their nasal passages could be dry, and humidifying the room can really go a long way to decreasing all that nasal congestion, believe it or not, and, and helping with the snoring and reducing it. So that's the wet. And the wild. Are you ready for this? Drum roll, please. <laughs> There's the wild. What is that? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell your partner you have something wild planned for them tonight in the bedroom. Then you you're show them the this. You're going to throw the ball at them? <laughs> you're throw the ball. No, you're not. You've got a ball and you've got a t-shirt. And what this does is it's really kind of a special technique very special. What you want to do is you want to sew this ball to the back. It's, there's going to be a pocket. Where a pocket you, right, there it is. You put this. That, so most will have, if, if it doesn't have a pocket, sew one on. If you have one, put it in it. And then what I want you to do. So you're moving the pocket from the front. To the back. To the back. That's the wild part. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. You put a ball in there. You got, the, you got this all going. Now you're going to put it on backwards. So the ball is on the on the back. Yeah. So you're gonna now wear that to bed, and what that does is it stops you from sleeping on your back. Because one of the positions that's most problematic that contributes to snoring is back sleeping. So you want to get on the side. So that's the wet, and that's the wild. Who's got a snoring family member? <laughs> catch, catch! <laughs> you got it. I want you to share a sip with all your friends. With a snoring spouse, they will thank you. The wild and wet method. Thank you very much, Carol. Remember, happy and healthy. It starts at home.